Good morning, modern setters. This morning, let's check in on the chicks at first. They are doing awesome. They're growing big and healthy. It's the one thing I don't like about the heat light is it just makes everything look funky. But the chicks are doing awesome. We have the lighter colored ones. Let's see if I can grab one. Our Novagins which are a breed from Norway. It's supposed to lay a large brown egg and be good on pasture. And then the darker ones are an Easter egg layer and they're supposed to lay a large green colored egg. There the, ooh, that's an Easter egg. Get them out in the light. This is an Easter egg layer right here. But all the birds are doing nice and healthy. I am loving the heat lamp. It's nice to have an on off switch right here. The turbo feeder is amazing. It's awesome how much food the feeder will hold. Every once in a while you just gotta keep an eye on it and give it a good shake and make sure that there is feed in the bottom tray. A little bit of wood chips in there, so shavings. Just go in there and pick them out. The other thing we can do is we could raise it up off the shavings a little bit more. But that turbo feeder is awesome. I, they always have feed in front of them, which will make them grow faster. I'm loving the automatic water that's hooked up to our five gallon pail. Yep, there's Figaro. He wants to make sure he doesn't miss out on nothing. Huh, Figaro? Yeah, yo. Crazy cat. Chicks are growing awesome. I'm loving the water, the feeder, and the light. Between the chicken brooder setup, the new waterer, feeder, and light, it's just been awesome for raising chicks. Normally we have a 100 gallon like cow or horse watering trough that we use to raise them in. We couldn't use that this year with Figaro, so we can't for this design. It's amazing, it's like 30 bucks to build. It's Figaro proof, but the feeder and water, ah, all that stuff works amazing. I'll put a link here to the chick brooder build simple easy build it's been working awesome and i'll put a link in the description down below to coops and more where you can get the water and feeder and light and if you use lumna as a promo code you get 10 percent off your order and free shipping man it's just changed the chick raisin for us it's so much easier i know i keep saying it but that's usually the pain is the feed and the water so thanks jason for coming up with that design it works slick all right enough with that Let's get on to the tomatoes. We gotta water these bad boys. But they are looking amazing. Look at them things. We're gonna be eating some awesome BLTs. Yes, sir. I still think it's weird that these two rows didn't do well. I don't know why, but hey, we got plenty of other tomatoes. Our tomatoes over here are starting. The peppers are starting to come through. And our celery we need to transplant. Whew, I gotta find time to transplant the celery. We've been busy. Let me show you what we've been busy doing. We've been busy with all the regular homestead stuff. And our maple sap collection and making maple syrup. We got probably six or seven gallons of maple sap. And it's nice to have the cave, a nice walk-in cooler to keep everything nice and cold. That's just amazing. I mean, we couldn't keep them in our refrigerator. We got our very own maple sap, homemade kombucha. What do we have over here? Nothing homemade on this side, but wait a minute. Boom! We got our air curing meats right here. Ah, oh, our capicola. Mmm.
prosciutto. Yes, sir. I'm liking it. Delicious. Man, this room's making me hungry. We better get out. It's making the animals hungry, too. They smell all the good deliciousness. Sorry, guys. That's off limits to you. No Figaro's allowed. I'll have to get like a sign, kind of like, no girls allowed. But we'll put no pets, because they'll be in there eating the prosciutto. We can't have that. What else do we have down here going on? I think that's it. We gotta make sure we get the wood stove loaded up today. It's supposed to be getting, I don't even want to say it, uh, six to 18 inches of snow. And it's gonna be heavy, wet stuff. Oh, I'm telling you, spring is next weekend. Next week, man. This week, we changed the clocks back on the weekend. So, when it's this time of the year and we start getting snow, it's gonna be heavy, wet stuff. So, um, we could have a lot of power outages. We could have a lot of trees down with all that. It's gonna be a pain to shovel, but spring is gonna be here before you know it. March 20th, right around the corner. <sighs> These guys are crazy. Yeah, yo, you're crazy. You, you're crazy. Yeah, you. All right. Let's check the temperatures. The weather station is working awesome. We're loving it. Wind speed is two. It's coming in from like the northeast. 73 in the house. Humidity 35%. Let's see. 27 outside. This is what I like. Feels like 20. <laughs> Snows are coming. Oh, let me show you this fun new weather app that I just found out about yesterday. That's the icon. It's One Weather. I think the website's 2020 Weather or Weather 2020. But I don't really care for the regular forecast. It's kind of plain and boring. There's no written text. But the awesome part about this app, hit forecast, and then up here we can click on 12 weeks, come on, 12 weeks, and it gives us a weekly forecast. I have to keep an eye on it and see how accurate it is, but it goes out for 12 weeks, giving you the average high and average low for the week. So like for us, it's telling me basically, we're gonna have a cold, long spring. It's telling me we're not getting above freezing at night until May. All of March, we're in 30s, 40s for high during the day, and between eights and 20s at night for a low. And then in April, we get into the 40s, stop pushing the 50s for a high during the day, but we don't get above freezing at night until May. I'm liking this app because it's going to be handy to be able to look out three months and see what our weather is going to be like, especially for gardening, for starting your gardening. We can plan on, oh, hey, we're still going to have really cold lows at night. That soil temp's not going to warm up. Or, oh, hey, we're getting pigs, but the weather's looking kind of, eh. I better make sure we have extra hay or a good, strong shelter to keep them in at night. So that's why I'm looking forward to that app. The good thing about the snow, maybe you might have a snow day. And if Olivia has a snow day, that means we're gonna be boiling maple syrup on that snow day. So, it's a good thing I'm looking forward to. I'm sure the sap ran yesterday, and we already have seven gallons, so if we can get that again, we'll be in good shape.
the ducks love to make dirty water. That's for sure. It's the one thing about ducks. If you want to have good, clean water, don't get ducks. Ducks like to play in the water. What they do is they get whatever food they have, put it in their mouth, and then they need water to wash it down. So they take a drink and like backwash quite a bit. Yeah. So a heads up on the ducks. They are fun animals, they make great eggs. They're fun to watch. We keep getting renegade chickens. They want to go out and then they want to go back in. They're itching for spring. Yeah. They're waiting for some green pasture. Little do they know, they got at least another month. They're not gonna like that. But that's what that's what the weather's like here in northern New Hampshire. I was hoping that we were going to be able to put the pigs back out on pasture shortly. All the ice is almost melted. I was getting optimistic, but with the snow coming, I'm going to have to probably wait another week before we can let the pigs out. But they'll be out on pasture before they know it, and they'll be excited. I'm looking forward to being able to watch them run around again. It's fun watching them run and just have fun. The pigs really seem to be enjoying their feed and their hay. We're not keeping the automatic feeder filled up right now because they've been wasting a lot of feed, just playing around, taking it out, making a mess, they're bored. Until we can get them back out on pasture, I've been bringing them feed twice a day. It's been working out good. <sighs> Be interesting to see what the storm brings us. I'm surprised it's not snowing out yet. It's supposed to start snowing any minute now. I think it's supposed to get really heavy tonight. And then while we're sleeping and first thing tomorrow morning, it's supposed to be snowing pretty good. So we'll have to see how that goes. Maybe we'll be doing some boiling tomorrow. I'm hoping we are. Fingers crossed. You modern steaders were right, that was my bad. We were using pint jars, so we got just shy of half a gallon of maple syrup, not a gallon. <sighs> my bad, I apologize. I'll do better next time, I promise, I'll try. But thanks for bringing that to my attention. Now I know it was just half a gallon, like they said the ratio would be. So, I learned a lesson. But thanks for coming along on our crazy journey with us. I have fun with you guys, I learn a lot from you. I hope you learn a lot from us. Until tomorrow morning, we'll see you right back here tomorrow at Lumna Acres, a guide to modern homesteading, self-sufficiency, and freedom. Bye. Let's check on the sap bucket that's right here by the pigs. This is like 
the extra bonus footage. Ooh, it ran nice yesterday. Let's see. Oh, nice. Look at that. That's a quarter of the way full. That's exciting. I'm looking forward to checking the sap and boiling some sap tomorrow. That was like a sneak peek for all of us. Oh, I wish I could stay home and collect some sap, but we gotta go to work. So we'll see you tomorrow. Bye. <laughs>